Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I hope you'll grab a cup of coffee or a drink, glass of wine, something like that, because this is going to be a very chatty video. This video is about something I have learned recently, which I think is something that I really needed to learn. And I don't know if you need to learn it too, but I think it never hurts to kind of talk girlfriend to girlfriend because I can't be the only one who does these torturous things to myself. But before I get into that, I did want to show you my outfit I'm wearing today, and I absolutely love this outfit. All the jewelry and the outfit information is below the video. A lot of it is Amazon. Love these big gold hoops. They are a duplicate of a very expensive set of hoops that I saw in another website. They were like $150, and I think they're like $15 on Amazon. And also, I love the black blingy belt that you see there. And I ordered several belts in order to find a really, really good one. Love that one. And I also love the booties. Okay, let's get into this video. And I don't really know how to broach this subject with you, except to get right into it and say that in terms of my life goals, they always talk about looking at your life as if it's a wheel like the spokes of a wheel and that you have different quadrants of your life. Like you would have career, fitness and health, friendships, family, spirituality, um, that kind of thing, you know, that, that kind of wheel of your life. And I've always known that in many areas of my wheel, I am quite blessed. I grew up in a middle-class household. It was always understood that I would go to college. My parents owned a business. They got me in their business. Then that taught me business. My sister and I were able to start our own business 25 years ago. In many ways in my life, I am very, very blessed. I have a good marriage. I've been married 40 years. I have a really two great boys. I was gonna say a great set of boys, which they are, they're, they're grown men now. One of them is married. One of them just got a divorce, which ah, a little angsted my heart, but I think it was for the best. But anyway, when I look at the various spokes of the wheel of my life, I have always realized that I'm a natural kind of a workaholic type. I'm an accomplisher, I guess. So career is good. Fitness and health is pretty good, except I did just have a hip replacement. And if you'd like to see that video, I'll link it below because it was crazy. I got COVID during the experience and that was only two weeks ago. But anyway, of all the spokes of my life, most of them are pretty good, but I've always known that the friendship one was a little bit lacking. And I will say, kind of in my defense, I guess, I don't know if it's in my defense, but on the Myers-Briggs test, if you've ever taken that, one of the main things is that it measures your introversion versus extroversion. Are you an introvert? In other words, do you get recharged when you go home away from people? Or are you an extrovert where when you are in parties and groups of people, that's your energizer bunny phase, you know, you just take that energy out from other people. And I am right between introvert and extrovert. And that sounds balanced, I guess, but it also means that when I'm too introverted, I miss being an extrovert. And when I'm too extroverted and I'm at parties and whatever, and I really want to go home and be an introvert. So it is not the great thing you would think it is to be kind of evenly balanced between introvert and extrovert. And what that means is sometimes I am very content being in my home. I'm a home buddy, super home buddy. I love making videos. And so I can tend to let the friendships of my life kind of wane a little bit in favor of certainly my family, my marriage, other priorities that I have in my life, my work, that kind of thing. And that all came to a head for me recently. And I learned, I learned some really important things about friendship that I, I would like to share with you. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit embarrassed to be this naked with you, but I have always kind of felt, I've always had the story that other women don't like me very well, <laughs> that if I put myself out there with them, I tend to get hurt. So I, and that's happened actually quite a few times in my life. Uh, one of which was a 30 year friendship that I had with a girl who used to live in Wichita. She and her husband used to live in Wichita. And when they lived in Wichita, it was great because every Saturday night we'd have them over for margaritas. That was more than 25 years ago when I was still drinking, when I could do margaritas and wine. But anyway, we had a 30 year friendship. They moved away to other cities. She was a big mover. She loved to live down south. So she left Kansas and went back down south. But we kept a telephone friendship for many, many years, texting and phoning, sometimes multiple times a day. Well, to make a long story short, 
I think I probably never really disagreed with her very much. I always kind of knew that she was a strong woman and that she had definite beliefs and that my beliefs could kind of take a little bit of a backseat. You know, my beliefs, I didn't have to be out there with mine because she was so out there with hers. Well, one day she did something, and I won't get into the particulars, but it hurt my feelings. And so for the first time in like 30 years, I said, you know, you did that and I have to tell you that it hurt my feelings. Well, she didn't think it should have hurt my feelings. And so she decided she no longer wanted to be my friend. And so in a text, she dumped me. I got dumped from a 30 year friendship in a text. So that of course proved my point that other women don't like me. And I will remind you that when I came to YouTube, a lot of the other women kind of rallied against me because my channel took off in the very beginning. You know, it's leveled off now as most channels do, but in the very beginning, it was kind of going up like a rocket and they didn't like that too well. And they did videos against me. I mean, it was, it was not fun. And, and the sad thing is, and I don't mean to be a victim here, but I had always wanted to come to YouTube. Five years ago when I came, I saw all these YouTubers having great relationships and I really wanted to be, I really wanted to be one of those YouTubers and, and be friends with them. I thought that would be so cool. And so it was just a slap in the face to come to YouTube and then immediately get slapped in the face. Um, so that was difficult, but it proved my story, my story that other women really don't like me and that you have to keep your distance maybe from most other women. And, and I do have a couple of close friends, I do. But in terms of women in maths, you know, I, I'm a little afraid because sometimes my relationships have not worked out that much in that way. And so what I did instead is I concentrated on work. I concentrated very much on my family. I have a family dinner one night a week here. Family is big to me, but I always knew that I should probably focus more on friendships but I really didn't that much. Okay, fast forward to what happened two weeks ago, and this is the big learning thing that I learned. And that is that, fortunately, I am so happy that maybe about four years ago, Missy Francis, who's not named Missy Francis anymore, but that's how I knew her in junior high, she had been one of the junior high girls that I was friends with in junior high, and she got us all back together again. And it was wonderful. We've had like four different yearly trips we went to Kansas City one year. We went to New Jersey to one of the girls' house another year. We went down to the Branson area to another girl's house another year. This next year in June, we're going to the northwestern part of the country. I don't know exactly what we're doing, probably hiking around and all that, and I'm not that great at that, so that should be very interesting for me. But I was so happy that Missy got me involved with this group. It's probably eight women. And, you know, we see each other once a year and there's this text chain, right? We have this text chain. And quite honestly, I got behind on the text chain. I have a bunch of junk mail in my text. My husband finally helped me get rid of all those junk marketing texts, but I never could keep up with their text chain. You know, it seemed to me like it was constantly going and then I'd, you know, go there and then I'd have to read back three pages to figure out where I was. And quite honestly, I had this idea in my mind you know, I still work in the mornings at my company and I do YouTube in the afternoon. And I thought, well, surely they'll understand because I'm busy. Well, they're busy too. They have busy, busy lives. But for the most part, they do keep up with the texts because that means they're keeping up with the friendships. And I did that some, but not enough. So here's what happened. I went to the text chain two Saturdays ago before I had my operation, before I had my hip replacement. And I saw my good friend, Missy, who lives in Kansas City. I live in Wichita. And there she was with three of the other girls, Mimi, Leslie, and Kim. And Kim is from Wichita. And usually if we'll do something in Kansas City, I will drive Kim and we'll go see Missy or whatever in Kansas City. Well, I saw these four girlfriends and somebody said, where are you girls? And Missy said, well, we're in Kansas City. We came to see the Bruce Springsteen concert. And all of a sudden I thought, oh my gosh. Kim from Wichita got invited, Missy got invited, Leslie from Branson got invited, and I thought, why wasn't I invited? And I got super, super, super hurt, super hurt. And instead of waiting, which Alan said, just wait and call Missy in three or four days, because Missy and I do talk on the phone some, um, he said, wait. And of course, when I get my feelings hurt, wild horses couldn't stop me from opening my big fat mouth. So on that text chain, I said, Hope you girls have fun at Bruce tonight. It would have been nice to be invited. Snarky comment on my part. It would have been nice to be invited. And then I waited for someone to respond. No one responded. 
None of the eight or 10 girls that in my mind were texting 24 seven, nobody responded. That day, that Saturday, that Sunday, that Monday, it got clear to the next Saturday and there was no response to my snarky comment. And during that time, I had number one, super regrets about my snarky comment because that was extremely rude of me. But then number two, I started to feel extremely down and in my mind, I created another story. I said, oh, well, they probably started a whole new text chain because nobody likes me. They think I'm snarky. They think I shouldn't have made that comment. And so they're just going to go on with their lives without me. And then all of a sudden I started, you know, expanding on that. And it was horrible. I thought not only did they block me on the text chain, they've started another one. Am I not going to get invited to the Northwest for this year's upcoming summer event? And I just ran all these scenarios in my head and I had plenty of time to do this because nobody responded on that text chain for a whole nother week. And so by about midweek, I had decided that they all hated me. They wanted nothing to do with me and I felt terrible, but I did what I sometimes do, what I try to remember to do all the time, which is when I'm very hurt by something or something doesn't seem to be going my way, I always remember my idea that God does not give bad gifts. So I did. I stopped and I prayed about midweek and I said, Lord, I don't know why I'm in this position where it seems like nobody likes me. They've excluded me, but I know you don't give bad gifts. So please show me the gift of this situation. And during that week, I had a lot of time to think about not only what I thought they had done to me, but I had a lot of time to think about what I am like as a friend what I am like as a friend. And I realized number one, that those junior high school girlfriends are super, super, super important to me. And I didn't realize that until in my mind they were gone. And I thought, oh my, I had a group of girlfriends that liked me. And now through my snarkiness, they are gone. And I really realized number one, the value of that friendship. And if you have friendships out there that are kind of waning, I totally urge you to reach out to that person, to send them a text, just to give them a call and say, how are you doing? Because to have a friend, you have to be a friend. And I realized that I expected them to be my friend, but I wasn't putting in the time to go to the text chains and keep learning about their lives and really care about them. And so I just realized that I really wasn't being a very good friend. And in my mind, they had stopped the friendship with me because I was a lousy friend and now I was paying the price for that, which meant I didn't have them as friends anymore. So anyway, okay, so that was the story that I told myself and I was miserable and I was miserable for a full week. Alan heard about it. I was not suicidal, but super, super, super depressed about it. Okay, well, fast forward to Saturday, a week from when I gave the snarky comment and I get a text from my friend Missy in Kansas City who says, Beth, are you okay? And so I text her back and I said, Missy, I am really, really sorry. You had every right to invite only the girls you wanted to to Bruce Springsteen concert. You, you, you had no obligation to invite me and I so much apologize for my snarky comment. And so she called me and she said, Beth, what are you talking about? I said, what do you mean? And she said, Beth, I invited you to that concert six or seven months ago when it was announced. And you said you would talk to Alan and you came back and you said, that you and Alan were going to go with your Tulsa friends. We have these Tulsa friends that love music and love concerts and that you didn't want me to get you a ticket. And I thought, hmm, because I had no recollection of that at all, like none. At first I thought, ooh, am I getting Alzheimer's? My mom is starting to, so that scared me. But then when I went to Alan and told him, he said, Beth, that's absolutely true. He said, you came to me six or seven months ago and said, should I go to the concert with Missy in Kansas City? And he said, no, the Tulsa people are trying to get it arranged to where we're going to the concert in Tulsa to see Bruce. And so apparently at that time, I told Missy no to the tickets. And then I told her about my fear that because of my snarky comment, everybody had cut me out of the text. They'd started a new text string without me. And she's like, Beth, let me look at the text. But she says, I don't think anybody's responded in the last week. And she said that happens sometimes. And quite honestly, if I paid more attention to those texts, I would know that because since that time, which was probably three weeks ago, I have noticed that there are significant periods of four or five days sometimes where no one says anything. So anyway, when I talked to Missy, I was so super relieved that number one, I had been invited, not that they had to, but they did invite me 
Number two, that I had created this story in my head that women didn't like me and that this played into that. And I realized that what we believe comes to pass and I better get rid of that belief because that belief is doing me absolutely no favors. And so it was really important that I go through that whole process and all the depression, the, the, the hills and the valley to realize that those friendships are important to me and that I really need to nurture them. And instead of just saying, what can they do for me? I need to reach out to them and say, hey, what do you need? What is going on with you? How is your world going? And since that happened three weeks ago, I have been doing that. I've been following the texts. And one of the girls, Jane, had a father who had a 90th birthday here in town. And she invited everybody who wanted to come to come. And so those of us in Wichita, Kansas City did come. I saw Jane and it was great. Here's Jane and Missy at that event. Absolutely wonderful. But I truly realized from that, that number one, I do have those girlfriends. And number two, I really need to make an investment in that. Okay, now the second thing, I know this is super chatty. Let me have another drink of coffee here. And this story actually goes on a bit because about two weeks ago, two weeks and three days ago, I had a hip replacement. And I didn't think that the hip replacement would teach me anything about friendship, but come to find out it really, really did. And for those of you who also think, hey, you don't really have very many friends or whatever. And I think in midlife, a lot of us, a lot of us can feel that way. I know sometimes I feel that way. And I was very surprised because during my hip replacement, it was like everybody came out of the woodwork to support me. I got beautiful flowers. One guy from my church group, Phil, gave me a $50 gift card to Yoder Meats, which is a really fine meat store in town. And he knows I'm a carnivore, which was really kind. I had two or three people make meals and bring them over. My parents came over, brought me flowers. It was really crazy, all of the love and support that I felt during that time. And it reminded me that all of us are busy and we may not talk to each other every single day or even every single week or every single month. But when we do talk, there is real friendship there. And it also reminded me that when the going gets tough, people do tend to come around and do nice things for you. And it also reminded me that I have the obligation to do the same thing. I think I'm fairly good at that, but I could probably be better. So anyway, that was just something I wanted to share with you, something I learned about the power of friendship, the power of being a friend, and also the stories we tell ourselves and that they really should be good ones and not negative ones because we are going to live in the stories that we put out there and we want to make sure it's a beautiful dream and not a lonely nightmare. Okay. And if you all have any feelings about friendship, you'd like to share anything, are you kind of lonely sometimes in the second half? I'm a little bit lonely sometimes in the second half. I have to admit that. Or if you have ways that you nurture your friendships, if you could share that in the comments section, I think I would really like to learn from you all. I'm really learning that you guys are a tremendous resource for me. And I really appreciate your comments because I learn so much from them. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these cards. And this is the Super Attractor card deck. Let's see. Let's choose hopefully a positive card to think about for today. Ooh, I like this. I believe I'm worthy of feeling good. I believe I'm worthy of feeling good. Oh, friends, I absolutely love this because that goes back to the whole situation, really, that I just went through. And that is that sometimes, sometimes I don't really feel worthy of all the good things I have in my life. I don't necessarily feel worthy of feeling good. And friends, I really want to change that. And in fact, I'm going to carry this card around me in my purse. That's how I've been using these cards is I'll draw one in the morning and I'll link them below in case you'd like to get a set. They're really, really good. But I put it in my purse and then I can look at it. I believe I'm worthy of feeling good. I believe I'm worthy of feeling good. And you know, I believe you're worthy of feeling good too. Friends, thank you so much for being with me during this very chatty video. And if you have any thoughts you'd like to share about anything I shared, I would love to read them in the comments section. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.